last a few minutes just starting to flow now. But that's because I've got this uh, nozzle cleaning device working. Well, it's in operation. I wouldn't say it's working as such. It's in operation now. That comes across, cleans the nozzle. And as part of the G code, I ask it to rewind the nozzle, sort of retraction. So I think even before it's, well before it starts printing, it's already been retracted. Well, about six millimeters the filament because of the way I've got it set up. I mean, I need to change that, but. Um, leave it for now and that's probably why it's not starting to layer the plastic on the bed for you know, a couple of passes in a way I do ask for skates anyway this is the body part of my filament run out sensor the micro switch version now I already have a version which is actually in use now and it works okay. The ver I'll show you that just for in a few minutes anyway, whenever sort of thing. Um, I'll just talk about this first, is that uh, the version I've got that is in use is fine really except that uh, I have to remove the lid to pass the filament through so that I can make sure that the filament well actually goes through because it goes in one slot through and out the other side it goes in the side of this box it doesn't go in the edges of the box it goes actually in the side so to speak anyway as it passes through I have to make sure it goes on the outside of the lever arm of the micro switch I use a micro switch with a lever arm on because it once the filament's broken or not there, the, the arm will move forward in a way, move up, and the filament could easily go on the inside of the arm, which is pointless. So this version of this body, well, there's three parts of this. There's a body, there's a lid, and there's a button, because it'll have a button that I can press, and that will move the arm in, and then I can pass the filament through hopefully and well through both sides and that will make it a bit easier without having to remove the lid all the time I want to put any new filament in basically so I think this is about one hour print maybe slightly more so we'll be pausing the video I'm using this video off a, well the camera off a power pack because my camera batteries are broken and this camera, well this power pack is a bit funny sometimes it can just stop working and then start working again without any sort of warning. Also on this I've tried to put a bit more like chamfers in a way for the filament to go into so that's a bit easier to like feed it in it doesn't have to well hopefully it doesn't have to be totally accurate as it's going in one side and coming out the other because it's actually inside the box once it goes in it's inside the box and it might not line up with the hole on the other side so to speak so I'm hoping that these chamfers I've got will help line that up going to pause the video now and I'll come back well, probably about an hour or so actually quite near the end I think well actually what I'm going to do is show you the filament run out sensor as it is now
like the camera did cut out there because I am on this power pack. I was about to show you the film run out sense I've got at the moment. It is here in this box here. So the filament goes in through there through a little hole, comes out to the, into the boarding tube, boarding tube comes from here to my belt drive feeding mechanism. Yep, very good this feeding mechanism. Notice this is clear tube here. I want clear tube for an optical run up sensor that I'm trying to experiment with. I've had no success really at the moment with the method I wanted it to do anyway. Anyway, the tube comes down here, boarding tube, to the hot end E3D version 6 clone. Point four nozzle on there. This is just a bracket, actually this is a bracket I had on this, this when I had my a carriage mount for a camera on a carriage on. I've removed that now, the carriage, and I've hacked it together here. These clips, this is a server cabinet, that's what this is in. Big 18U server cabinet. Put my print in. So, and as I say, there's a micro switch in there, just a pretty standard small micro switch. And the filament rests against the lever arm of that micro switch. If the filament breaks, the lever arm moves like this way, triggers the ramps, and that will pause the print basically, and then you can recover after that. The problem here has been that once the arm moves forward, if you try to feed the filament in after that, the filament can go be behind the arm. So I have to keep removing the lid. Also that threading it is a bit hard to get in through here and get into this sort of, there's a boarding fitting under there for the boarding tube. So on this print here that I'm doing now, this will actually have a button. So when need to change the filament, can press the button, that will knock the lever arm in, feed the filament in, which I hope will be a little bit easier because I've also tried to put some like chamfers to help guide the filament through as it goes in. Don't know how successful that's going to be. Uh, well that part anyway, the chamfers that is. But at least it should keep the lever pressed while I put the filament in, then you can release the button and the filament will be the correct side of the lever, hopefully. I'll say this this is a like a server clamp in a way to go on, on the rack units, rack rails here on this server cabinet. A pretty big server cabinet. I'm waiting for a piece of wood to actually raise this up, this whole print, and put my ramps. There's my ramps there, in, well, inside this box cardboard, just a cheap cobbled together cardboard box of ramps, a couple of power supplies, one for the heat bed, 24 volts and 12 volts for the ramps. I intend to put those below the printer on a wooden shelf. That I've well, I've got some wood on order, got some brackets. I'll show you the brackets while I'm here. So these are just general purpose brackets. These are what are known as cage nuts. These do come with this like server cabinet. These ones did anyway, the balls. But these aren't particularly like server brackets in a way for a server thing, but the uh, the fitted ideal just about. I had to drill the holes, there's a couple of holes in the screws, but I had to drill them out to 6mm, which was extremely easy. If you've done this, if you get these and you've done this, be careful because the drill just went through like literally, well, like a laser beam through paper, I suppose, or something. Really fast. Too fast, it shocked me actually how quick it went through. We'll bolt them onto these sort of uh, 
cage nuts here. That's on the, that's just, I just put this up here as a temporary measure just to try it out to see how strong it is. It does have a little bit of movement because of the cage nuts but it's pretty strong up there. Obviously that will be lower down, it'll be say, well maybe about here somewhere. And then a piece of wood and then the printer will be actually on top of that. And the ramps and all the electronics below it, maybe some other stuff. So that is the basic plan for what I have planned to do with the server cabinet. When I do that I'm going to turn this up the other way, the server cabinet I actually put upside down. You can tell which way is up because there's a big knockout panel at the which should be at the top for fans. Also on the server cabinet, I don't know if we can really see it all that well here. Also in the server cabinet, it's like an extra brace going along here. Well, this should be at the top as I say because this is upside down, but there's an extra sort of support brace I think going along the bottom edge, I don't know. I can see anything here. I have to be careful because I could be printing on. That should be at the top because this unit is actually meant for putting onto walls. Great big unit like this. Can you imagine that full of servers? You can get you can get trays, shelves, drawers, all sorts for these server cabinet servers, disk drives, fan units you name it. Well you haven't been able to find a tray to go in or shelf or anything to go in of the size and shape I want basically. So that's why I've got a piece of wood on order ready to be shaped and cut to size to go around the veils here. Uh, and then to be fastened, well, be supported with these brackets I showed you earlier. Okay, so that's a, that's a basic sort of plan there. As I say, that bracket is just up there. Sorry, that bracket is just up there temporary. It'll be down here somewhere. Okay, there's a sort of temperature gauge hydrometer thing in there. There. Behind here. It's just packed. If I can show you it, there's a moisture absorbent unit. That will probably be moved to be, you know, a lot, well, quite a few changes when this gets done, I think. Okay, I'm going to pause the video just now. There's my spore of filament there, feeding into the box I wanted to show you. But hopefully this one that's getting printed now will be an improvement. the video now. One hour twenty one minutes seventeen seconds. Fifty millimeters per second I believe it speeds at. So it comes off the bed off and all leaving parts of pop off the bed with Elmer's glue stick on. Little sort of strings. But this is like to support the sh like shaft of the button that will come through on the side here. Press on the lever of the micro switch. Filament going through that hole needs clean. Right, this is the lid part of this filament runout sensor micro switch version. I think this is about a half hour print maybe a bit longer. I will be pausing the video throughout. For one reason I am using this power pack on my camera. Not too bad but after about five minutes of use it just cuts out and I have to press this little button again that tells me you know how much power is in. I wrote one and two because it's supposed to be one amp and two amp claimed output. That's what I'm 
powering this camera off because the battery, the actual battery for the camera, oops, is damaged. Have I selected the button here? I've selected the button. Oh, I'm going to leave it because this is only a 10 minute print. So this is, this is obviously the button. I thought it was printing wrong there. So as I say, there is a button, there's a button sort of that goes, well, in a way on the side that you press and that pushes the micro switch lever in so that you can thread the filament on the outside of the lever where it needs to be. Right, I'm going to pause this video even though this is a very quick print, 10 minutes or something, well a bit longer with heating the bed so to speak. Nozzle is at 225 ABS here. Bed's at 65. Elmer's glow stick on the bed there. E3D version 6 clone 1.75 filament. Sort of a day glow sky blue. Not day glow, glow in the dark. I keep saying day glow. It's not day glow, it's glow in the dark filament. Let's pause the video. Well, it's just finishing off now. Well, about to finish off. Well, there we go. So that's saying 12 minutes on the display. This is the button to push the lever over. Bit of an end string there. I'll do the lid next. I'll get this off the bed, tidy it up. Do the lid after this. This is the lid. I meant to select this file before because I already had the button but I kept that going because it's quite a quick print. This is the lid part of this filament run out sensor using the micro switch. Still got problems with rules here. That's even with my uh, cleaner arm here. This is a servo powered this comes out and wipes holes off the nozzle. But this filament is so runny that it always oozes. Right, I'm pausing the camera now. Twenty-five minutes into this print of this lid. Oh, I'm not sure if you can see that there's a bit of a black almost blob on the print here. I think what's happening is the nozzle is leaking and it's been taken off, tightened up, taken off, tightened up, you know, heated up, tightened up, you name it, it's been done. The only thing I haven't done is put PTFE tape round the threads. That's about all I haven't done to try. So I've given up with this hot end I've got here. And I think I've seen a black. Maybe I didn't actually. I thought I'd seen a bit of black. That might have oozed out the nozzle. It might have been just the tip of the uh, nozzle itself. Hmm. But anyway, right, it's... Uh, Coming up to 26 minutes, I reckon there's about a quarter of an hour left looking at the biograph here. So I'll come back when this is finished. This is the lid part of this filament run out sensor for use with a micro switch. Well, there we are, it's finished. Uh, 32 minutes. Or around about. And you might see that dark mark. This is a sort of what I'm talking about where I think the nozzle might be leaking a bit, just seeping past the threads and uh, it's coming down under the print. That's what I think it's causing that. Apart from that it's a good, well it looks quite a good print so far as I'm going to tell from here. I'm waiting for the bed to cool, clean it up and then I'll fit the parts together basically. So, can I get this into focus? 
So here's a pad, and you can see this dark mark here. There's a slight sort of shade on this side as well. I'm pretty sure that is the nozzle leaking and it builds up plastic and it gets scorched or whatever and drops onto the print and gets mixed in with the plastic as it's printing. So I'm going to have to get a new nozzle because as I was saying, I have tightened and retightened it, took it apart, <laughs> you know, everything but put some PTFE tape say on the threads to try and stop it leaking. Well, here it is. I've wired it up. Now I intend to, this does have printed threads in because this is sort of printed this way up, it comes out a bit rough. So that's partly for board and tube in my case to go in, I will profile on without this in. Show you inside there, so there's a the micro switch, I've bent the arm a bit. You see that it's that side of the hole, that's when the... Uh, filaments ran out or been stopped and when I want to put some more filament in I can just press the button lightly you yeah, probably heard a click there actually and see the lead is this side of the hole so in a way that's the normal position oh this might be up there that's a normal position when the filament's going through the filament's pressing against the lever and if the filament snaps or runs out We'll move over there, trigger the switch, that will trigger the ramps and ask it to pause or what have you while you sort out the issue. Then when I want to feed some filament in, I can press the button. That means that the filament will go this side of the lever and not that side of the lever. Because it was with the previous version I did of this that the filament, unless you took the lid off and then taking the lid off and mucking about, the filament could go like this side of the lever, which is pointless really, obviously. So you might hear this. Hear the switch there. Did take a little bit of filing, particularly on this hole. And it on. I'm going to have to sort this uh, button out so that I can't really turn so much it turns there. It's getting stuck. This has like bumps on so you can grab hold of the lid easier and pull it off. Actually you might just see it there. I don't think it doesn't matter even if I hold it against gravity to a certain extent. The spring in there might just switches enough so here we are I've fitted it in here well, quite often I'll try and bend this pretty straight so that just gently because it will snap sometimes so I'll press the button Oops, sorry about that and um, I'll do that again because I was knocking the light there, you might hear the switch. If you can hear. Pop it in, push it down, let go of the switch once it's passed, and you probably can see it going through the into this clear filament tube there, so it's going through and it seems to go in quite easily. Once it's past that stage, when it gets into my, uh, comes round, if it gets like through this top up here, then you know it's okay basically, and it has, 
actually it's come up now there's my feeding plug drive feeding mechanism here so yep that's all right I'm not going to do a test on it I don't do a like a test on my previous version I show a video about that but this is better because now we have a button that if I don't have to keep taking the lid off on the other one I have to keep taking the lid off to make sure that the filament was going the correct side of the correct side of that lever arm on the micro switch. So this is an improvement. 